Good evening, wherever you are. I'm here in the evening, so that's what I'm going to say. Okay, in this video, uh, I'm going to go over the changes to demand and changes to supply. Um, I'm going to do this from the widget example. So widget, remember the fake product doesn't exist, um, just sort of generalized things. So there's another video uh, where we'll take a specific product, um, put that one in there. But anyway, so first thing to remember is that the goods own price, so the whatever the widget is, um, its price is only going to change, it's a delta symbol for change, it's only going to change the quantity demanded. And so remember, if the price goes up, the quantity demanded is going to go down. And then conversely, if the price goes down, the quantity demanded is going to go up. In other words, uh, things get more expensive, we want to buy less of them in this example. And things get cheaper, we want to buy more of those products, right? And the, on the other side, on the, on the uh, supply side, if the price changes, this is going to change quantity supplied. So this is the law of supply. If the price of those widgets increases, then firms or suppliers are going to want to sell more of those widgets. And if the price decreases, quantity supplied is going to also decrease. In other words, things get more expensive, firms want to sell more of those things, and things get cheaper, uh, firms want to sell fewer of those things. So that that's uh, the first thing to remember. Now, there are some things that actually will change uh, the, the demand and the supply. So first off, the changes to demand. Okay, Here are the five Really, they're the most common things that will influence demand and change consumer behavior towards your widgets. Okay, So the first one is how much they like the widgets. Okay, And this one is consumer tastes. Um, you know, sometimes people write tastes and preferences. Okay, In other words, how much they like them. So if they like them more, this is going to increase the demand. If they don't like them less, it's going to decrease the demand. Next um, is going to be related goods. Okay, so there are goods that influence um, the uh, purchasing of other goods. So first of all, let's do a, a good one here. This is uh, complementary goods or complements. Okay, um, complements are goods that we buy with other goods. So if the price of the complement decreases, this is going to increase the demand for your widget. Okay. Now, similarly, if the, the widget or the complement to the widget gets more expensive, people are going to want to buy uh, less of that. Right? So the price increases here, we're going to get a decrease in demand. Okay. The opposite is true. Sometimes there are products that we buy instead of other products. Okay. So um, these are called substitutes. Okay. And if the price of a substitute you call it PS, we should probably call these PC complement. Uh, if the price of the substitute increases or it gets more expensive to buy that other product, it's going to increase the demand for your widgets. And similarly, uh, if the price of the substitute gets cheaper, people will switch to that cheaper alternative and the demand for the widget is going to decrease. Okay, so those are those. I probably should have written these guys in red, but well, I didn't do that. Sorry. Uh, let's go back to black here. All right, next, um, there are changes to income, right? So, it, as people get wealthier, there's a wealth effect. So, if it's a normal good, and a normal good is one that we buy more of when our income increases. So, income increases, demand is going to increase. Most goods and most widgets are actually normal goods, and similarly, people lose their job, they lose their income. This is going to decrease the demand. Okay. Now, if something is an inferior good, okay, then the what that means is that the demand will actually increase when income falls. And if people get richer, they don't buy as many of these products and the demand decreases. So that's an inferior good. Things like used products and uh, uh, generic items can tend to be inferior goods. Okay. Next, the number of buyers. Okay, so how big is the market? Okay. 
Uh, and if the population increases, we're going to see more demand. And if the population decreases, we'll see less demand. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, you know, there might be a, like a weekend when there's just more customers showing up for some other reason, right? The last one here is is a little bit hard. It's expectations of future price. Okay, what do we think is going to happen with the price? So, if consumers think that the future price is going to is going to go up or increase, okay? They're going to increase their demand today. Okay? I'm going to run out there and I'm going to buy as many as I can of those widgets today because I think the future price is going to go. Okay? This happens sometimes in oil markets. And if I think that the price of the widgets is going to decrease in the future, okay, going to get cheaper, this is going to decrease my demand today. So let's say uh, here in the U.S. there's this uh, weird holiday. It's called Black Friday, okay, the day after Thanksgiving. I was pro Black Thursday. No, I love Thanksgiving. Okay, so Black Friday. And consumers go out and they try to get good deals. They think the price is going to go down for those. And let's say your widget is sold on Black Friday. Well, on November 15th, which is right before Black Friday, consumers know this. So it's actually going to decrease the demand for your products there. Okay, So that's the, the demand side. Okay, Now, if you put it all together, you get this nice acronym. You get uh, tastes, uh, related goods, income of buyers, or so, and then number of buyers, and then expectations of future prices. So you can memorize this if you're thinking about trial. Okay? So here, I'll just scoot this down a little bit. So now, let's do the changes to supply. Okay, so now you're on the supply side of the widgets. Okay, there aren't as many of these. So here we have, uh, the first one is the price of production. How much does it cost to produce the widgets? And so if the if the price of production is increasing, it's getting more expensive, this is going to decrease the supply of widgets in the market. And if the price is decreasing, then this is going to increase the supply of widgets. Said another way, if production gets more expensive in this case, then we're going to see a decrease in supply. And if production gets cheaper for whatever reason, we'll see an increase in supply. We're able to produce more. Okay. Next is our buddy from up, up top there, expectations of future price. Okay. And now this is on the seller side. So if sellers think that the future price is going to increase, they're actually going to decrease supply as long as the widgets are not perishable. You're going to hold off and you're going to sell them at a future date when you think the price is going to go up. Okay, now in um, we'll say blue here, uh, if we think that the price, uh, the future price, is going to decrease, then we're going to try to sell as many as we can. We're going to increase that supply, crank them out, sell them as quick as, as possible. So if the widget has like some kind of perishable date, or if there's a new model of widget going to come out uh, at some point, and the sellers know this, we're going to increase the supply. Okay, next is literally the number of sellers. Okay, so how many firms are there selling the widgets? How many um, uh, suppliers are there? If it's some kind of labor market, uh, if it's an increase in sellers, it's going to be an increase in supply. And if it's a decrease in sellers, uh, be a de you know firms are shutting down or whatever. It's a decrease in supply. Um, one thing about this one is often if there's a merger. Okay, if, if two firms have merged into one, then um, we're actually going to see a, a supply decrease. And so think about this. If there is firm number one that sells widgets and firm number two that sells widgets, and the two firms merge into one firm, it doesn't make sense to keep both widget sellers open, right? You're going to say, you know, uh, widget and seller number one, you're not as productive. We're going to move production over here to widget seller number two. Okay, that's, that's a merger. You see that a lot in, in business. And then finally, this one almost always increases um, supply uh, is technology. Okay. And technology is, is, it could be like a you know, robotic machinery capital good type thing. It could also just be um, a process, right? Henry Ford didn't invent any sort of new 
uh, machines to do a lot of the work. He just put them in his put his workers in an assembly line, organized them in a different way, and this increased supply. So technology is almost always going to be an increase in supply. Otherwise, firms wouldn't employ that new technology. So if you look over the the changes to supply, you've got P E S T and you've got pest. Right. So you think about the the different changes on the supply side, and then one more time, the different changes on the demand side. Right, those make up tribes. So if you memorize both of those, think about what's going on. This will put you in a good place here in the, in the economy.